Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist. So today, our question is, is this thing of the devil or what? Good question. I guess it's how you use it. Amen? Let's talk about that today. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your salvation uh, today, Father. Let us uh, help someone out there uh, with some balance and draw closer to you and your word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So my perspective on this whole issue may be a little bit different than yours because remember, I spent 30 years in prison until, well, First week of May will be two years I've been out of prison. So up until that time, I never had one of these. I never had one of these. So I bring a little bit of a fresh perspective to the whole phenomenon, if you will. So I'm going to double down on what I said. Is that thing of the devil or what? It depends on how you use it. There's a, and I'll talk about the positive first. There's a positive aspect to the availability of information, the availability of knowledge and information. But that requires some discernment. That requires some spirit-led biblical discernment. And if you don't have that, then uh, as we used to say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And uh, let's read a, a, a verse here out of the book of Jude. Jude, verse 3. Only one chapter. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. What's he saying? He said, you stick by the stuff. You stick by the stuff. And that's what I mean about having some biblical discernment when you get out there in that jungle of information, that jungle of information. You know, uh, uh, similar similar warnings were given by the Apostle Paul in First and Second Timothy. If you want to look there real quick, kind of set kind of set the tone for this thing. First Timothy, chapter four, and Second Timothy, chapter four. First Timothy, chapter four, Paul says this. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, ooh, we're there, we're there, brother, <laughs> sister, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. See, you get out there in that internet land, you are in a jungle of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And if you just allow too much of that stuff in, so what will happen is your conscience will be seared with a hot iron. You receive too much error and you will no longer be able to differentiate between truth and error. That's what I mean by biblical discernment, that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword dividing even, the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, with that, this is what makes the cut. Right, wrong, light, dark, good, evil, true, false. The Word of God makes the cut. Now you get, you get away from the Word of God and you're in trouble. Then we go over to 2 Timothy chapter 4 because this is what's going on. Here's what he says. Verse, verse 2, preach the word, be instant 
in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine and doctrine. For what? The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. I'm here to tell you that YouTube, all that stuff, Facebook, inter internet land is a jungle of seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, and fables. Fables. you got to be careful. you got to be careful. Because what, what did it say there? It said their own, after their own lusts. Okay, listen, lusts aren't all just physical. I mean, there are physical lusts having to do with this body. And we talk about lusting and, you know, whether it's sexual or, or whether it's food or whether it's drugs or, or wanting what somebody else says. There's, there's these kind of lusts, but there's another kind of a lust. Look over with me in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse, uh, uh, look at verse 3. Well, let's, let's back it up. Verse 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and what? And of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So there's the desires of the flesh, but there's also the desires of the mind. And you can see that exhibited in Acts chapter 17. And this is the danger. This is the danger of the internet. This is the danger of your of your computer. Acts chapter 17. Paul on Mars Hill. So uh, Paul gets there, verse 16, and while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? And other some, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him into the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Desires of the mind, lusts of the flesh and of the mind. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Ring in a bell. Some new thing. They spend all of their time to see and hear some new thing. Brothers and sisters, be careful about the lusts of the mind, the lust of the mind, whereby you get led astray, you get led astray, you get away from this old book right here, you get away from church, that's right, that stuff will get you away from and out of church, because you know what you'll say? You'll say, I don't need to go to church, I can go to church online, I can get, I can get fed from this preacher online. I can get fed from this preacher online. I don't need to go to the church. 
want you to listen to yourself. I want you to listen to yourself. I can get fed. I don't need to go to church. I, I, me, myself. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Verses 4. Verse 4. Ah. Go back to verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness, low, lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I don't need to go to church. I get fed off this preacher, that preacher. I, okay. But what about the others? I, I hear what you're taking, but what are you giving? See, that's what church is about. Church is interaction between people, mem members of the body of Christ, flesh and blood living people in who they are your brothers and sisters, people in whom you are invested in their life and they are invested in your life and you come and you make your presence known and if you don't ever do anything and if you don't even say anything, but you're there, you're there, you're present. See, that's, that's the danger. That's the danger of this thing. And listen, totally understand there are people that are aged, that are infirm, that are shut in, and they can't get to church. God understands that. God understands that. There are people that are located so geographically remote that there's no decent church near them. God understands that. But those are the rare cases. In most situations and circumstances, there's, there's somewhere you could go if you really wanted to. Listen, until, until just recently when I moved here, and I live, I live in a, a trailer on church property now, but the first year and a half, I commuted almost an hour, depending on traffic, over an hour, each way to and from church to get here to the church. Because what? Because, man, there's nothing more important. There's nothing more important to me than my church family. That, 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 that this, is, this is how God works. God works through the church that he has set up. That's why he called pastors and teachers and evangelists. That's why he spent much of the New Testament talking about deacons and church order and church structure. That's why, because this is an institution that God has established the institution of marriage, the institution of the church, these are, these are things that God has ordained that we should live in and walk in. And, my friend, that is no substitute. That is no substitute. I've used this illustration before, that I was in prison all those years, and I watched my daughter grow up in pictures. In pictures. Well, that wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. Listen, this little, this little thing right here, that ain't the same. That's not the same as a person being there, a real living, breathing person being there. That's not the same. That's not a substitute. That's like on Christmas when, when you get that TV screen of a fireplace, you know, it's fake. There's no warmth. There's no warmth. And that's what, that's what the danger of this internet is. It draws people into isolation. And you get drawn off into isolation, away from the rest of the body of Christ, and it's easy to get led astray, because as we said, there are so many fables and doctrines of demons and false teachings. And listen, all this stuff, all this stuff, it's like, oh, I found this new thing. Oh, I had a... I had a lady who has a rather large YouTube channel and she was telling me the other day that she did a year-long study and 
has decided that hell is no longer forever. It's annihilation. See, and that's that's what happens. That's what happens. That is a teaching of the Jehovah Witness cult. That has never been taught or accepted in 2,000 years of of church history, 2,000 years of the body of Christ, the, every preacher, teacher, evangelist, every man of God that has, that throughout church history has all agreed and read the same thing about the fire is not quenched and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. They've, we've all read the same thing. The Holy Spirit, Spirit taught us all the same thing. And you're going to come and try and tell me that the Jehovah Witness and these couple people on YouTube, oh, you're right, and every other Bible teacher, preacher, and all of the rest of the body of Christ throughout all church history is wrong, and you and the Jehovah Witnesses are right? Oh, you better not come at me with that willy lump lump stuff. See, it's like, there's a lot of this stuff. Fables, fables, all right? So, like, flat earth. Are you kidding me? Seriously? That's all I can, I think, what would say. Seriously? Look, man, whatever. You want to believe that? That's fine, man. But keep that mess away from me. <laughs> hey, man, that's like in the penitentiary, man. You know, somebody somebody get gets stepped to with some real nonsense. Somebody steps and tries to run some game down on somebody. Like, like there's some kind of mark. Like there's some kind of fool. Uh, like there's some kind of rube. You know, like they're willy lump lump. Somebody steps to you and starts running some 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 weak fake game on you. I mean, in in there that that's that that insults that would insult a man's intelligence, right? And so, in prison, you you got to be careful what you say to people. You walk up to somebody in prison and start talking to them like they're stupid and some kind of willy lump lump, and 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 they're gonna check you on it. Huh? They they're gonna talk about what? Uh, what? You think I'm Willy Lump Lump or something? What? I mean, hey, they you know, there's there's consequences. And 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 and, and so that's what I say. Hey, I ain't gonna hit you in the mouth, but man, if you if, if you're that delusional, do you think the earth is flat? Uh man, I just can't I just can't take anything else you say seriously. And please keep that stuff away from me. But listen, there there there's a right now. There's a Facebook group that used to be rightly dividing 1611, good King James, Ruckmanite Facebook group, right? And now the young man who has who started it and was was sound, he got all all off in a room somewhere by himself with his computer and decide he's going to redefine the deity of Christ and deny the deity of Christ. He's gone. Why is it that whenever one of these people finds some new revelation they want to give us, it's something coming from one of the cults? And this one, same thing. You got this girl with her with her channel, and she's telling you that there's no eternal burning hell. And you got this, this youngster with this Facebook group, and he's telling you that Jesus Christ was created. Where do you get all that from? I'll show you where you get all that from. You get all that right here. You get that from the New World Translation, the Jehovah Witness Bible. I had a guy tell me once, he said, uh, they came knock, knock, knock on my door. He said, I opened the door, and they said, would you like to become a Jehovah's Witness? He told them, Witness? I never even saw the accident. But, hey amen. I was going to be a comedian, but everybody laughed at me. Now, listen. These are these last and evil days I'm talking about. This is this is this is where the doctrines of devils, this is where people are not enduring sound doctrine, that they have the lust of the mind, they want to run and what hear and see some new thing. They're 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 jonesing for the next little mental thrill. Oh, this is new. Oh, look at look 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 how smart I am. Look what I discovered. And and listen, there's nothing new under the sun. You're you're just peddling the same old tired heresies that the body of Christ has rejected for two thousand years. That's the danger. That's the danger of spending too much time on this thing and separating yourself from church and the body of Christ. So, 
Is that thing of the devil? It can be. It can be useful too if you exercise discernment because you can go on that thing right now and you can find anything that you might have got in a good Bible college, a good Bible institute, sitting under, all that stuff's there. All that stuff's there. It's all on there. If you, if you use some discernment and listen, and some wise counsel. Wise counsel. Don't go off in a room, especially, especially if you're new to the Bible. Don't go off in a room by yourself and just swallow whatever that thing puts in front of you. Man, go, go to some seasoned, aged saints, uh, that people whose walk with the Lord you trust. Go to them. Get some advice, man. Don't. There's no solo soldier in this thing. There, there's no, there's no piece of the body of Christ that exists and functions all by itself, away from the rest of the body. We are, we are joined. I can't cut this finger off and sling it out out the door, and it's gonna be okay out there and survive. No, it. We are all part of the body, and the hand can't say because I'm not the foot. I'm don't need you, and you know the verse. So, be careful. Be careful that this thing right here does not come between you and the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, and it doesn't become between you and your church. Amen? I'm excited. We got Dr. Bill Grady here for a week. Tonight's the first night. Uh, I'll be going in there in a couple hours, man. We get to get to hear some Dr. Bill Grady preaching. Um, got some real good news coming up uh, on on my next preaching trip, which is going to be in June and July. It's going to be nine churches and two camp meetings. And uh, my parole officer uh, just told me, no problem, Roy. When May comes, we'll put it in. I'm going to approve it all. So it's going down, and I'll be telling you a lot more about that as as that time comes. And just like I did last summer, I'm going to take you all with me on the trip, man. It was a blast. God bless you. You know I love you. I'm not trying to chew you out hard, man. You know that, man. I'm, I'm easy like a Sunday morning. And Jesus loves you. So do I. Bye now.